Okay, so we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, I will start us off by doing the introduction of today's speaker. Um, today's speaker is Tawanda Gaynor. She is the founder and CEO of RN Reach LLC, um, where she provides academic support, coaching, mentoring services for aspiring nursing students. Um, she's a nurse educator, leader, and veteran with over 30 years of nursing experience. Ms. Gaynor has served as the nurse resident program coordinator at Howard University Hospital. Um, she also served as assistant professor, nurse recruiter, and counselor for Hampton University Veterans Education Transition for Success Program. And she served as the BSN program coordinator for Norfolk State University and clinical adjunct and academic success coach for both Virginia Commonwealth and South University. She has a master's of science and a bachelor of science degree from Hampton University. And she's currently pursuing her doctorate of education at the University of Phoenix. So I'm really excited to welcome Tawanda today to discuss our NCLEX preparedness and remediation um, joint learning collaborative discussion. So welcome Tawanda. You can go ahead and kick us off. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I'm excited to um, have the opportunity to share with uh, nursing faculty. Um, by no means I am, am I an expert, but I have I've worked in the past 16 years with some um, at-risk learners. And so I wanted to take this opportunity just to share um, some of the strategies that I believed um, have been successful, uh, particularly for those that I have been um, working with very closely over the past two years. Next slide. The objectives for today, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about how to structure early introduction of the RN detailed test plan, identify tools to examine the evidence of students at risk for adverse outcomes, um, describe evidence-based intentional remediation strategies, and also discuss the use of standardized testing data to improve student outcomes. Next slide. One of the um, strategies that I think probably is one of the most important strategies is when we began um, our nursing education curriculum or when the students start the program, I think it's really important important to discuss the theme, start with the end in mind. And what I mean by that is introduce students to the detailed NCLEX test plan early and often, particularly when they are beginning their nursing education courses. And we'll talk a little bit about why in a second. Um, it's also important to implement a student success seminar during the first semester, have students engage in an NCLEX test plan activity, um, during the nursing fundamentals course, and then thread the NCLEX test plan discussion throughout the curriculum. One of the things that I found um, during the remediation process is many of the students were not familiar with the NCLEX test plan. They heard about it, but they, they weren't able to really speak about it in regards to the client care needs, the content, and how that information is utilized um, in the nursing curriculum. And so what I would do um, early on in my nursing fundamentals class is have the students download the NCLEX test plan and then actually talk a little bit about the various um, items in the NCLEX test plan to include the integrated processes as well as client needs, et cetera. And I would have them memorize the NCLEX test plan components using an acronym SPPH. I'm just kind of summarizing a little bit in regards to help them get used to the language. Um, and so safety and effective management of care, physiological, psychological, and health promotion and maintenance. So then when they would hear SPPH, um, just maybe at random during lecture, I would ask what the acronym was and what it stand for. And they began to um, demonstrate an understanding of it. And by the end of um, their senior year, they were able to identify the components, speak about it, and then actually give examples of the various content um, in the various components. Um, the other thing that I found very helpful, and this was um, noted at um, Norfolk State uh, when I was working there, um, they did a student success seminar. Um, and during that time, what we would do is bring the nursing students 
and to have a basically have a meeting and it was a, like a one day seminar and I thought it was very, very helpful. Uh, we introduced the resources that were available. Um, we taught them how to navigate the resources. Um, we had various um, individuals come in and talk maybe from the writing lab. Um, and so I found that to be very, very helpful. Um, during that time, we also um, went over the NCLEX test plan, went over the standardized testing products and showed them how to use those products. Um, and then we actually had some hands-on training. So I thought that that was very, very important. When I talk about an active, um, have the students engaged in a test plan, active learning strategy, uh, one of the things I found very helpful during the um, fundamentals course is we would have some colored paper with the different components of the NCLEX test plan listed on, on the paper. And the students would have to come up with a question um, that fell into those categories. So for example, a diabetic patient, um, and we wanted them to come up with a question related to health promotion um, activities, health promotion and, and maintenance. And that seemed to be very, very helpful because not only were they able to talk about it, but they were also able to um, apply it to the various case studies. And they found that to be helpful as well. And then lastly, um, as they progressed through the curriculum, Again, I think it's important for faculty to assess their knowledge in regards to the NCLEX test plan and then really um, talk a little bit about how the previous course content, for example, of MedSurge, how the fundamentals content um, is related to the MedSurge content. For another example would be um, a patient, an elderly patient with a history of diabetes but she was also at risk for um, falls. And so we would talk a little bit about how fundamentals, the content and fundamentals basically was threaded through to the med surge area. And then talk a little bit about what would the focus be as far as basic care and comfort, safety. And then we would talk a little bit about the um, actual disease process in a med surge setting. Next slide. Okay, so. Um, the next um, slide that I'd like to talk about is intentional remediation strategies. Uh, intentional remediation strategies um, early and often. And uh, one of the things that I found is that if you check the pulse early and often, um, you can really uh, reach the at-risk learner and provide some remediation and um, some support and oftentimes increase their um, outcomes in regards to content, course grades, as well as success. And in doing so, um, one of the things that I was able to do is develop an individual student success plan. Um, so if the students basically had were identified as at-risk learners, they would be referred to me and we would develop the individual student success plan together. And some of the things that were part of the individual success plan is number one is um, assessing their learning styles. I know some of the um, standardized products such as ATI and HESI, they do the um, assessment of the learning styles early on. But I found that VARC um, it was really helpful, particularly once they were in the program. Oftentimes the students would think that their learning style was maybe visual, but we found or discovered that they were auditory learners et cetera. And so by doing that early on, we were able to identify their learning style um, and then also come up with strategies to help them study um, during their, um, for their courses. And oftentimes we saw significant improvement. Um, some were read-write learners and they were basically um, trying to look at videos and those kind of things. So once we identified what the learning styles were, then we provide strategies, teaching strategies. And then the other thing that was real important, I told them to, well, I would share with them is to find out what your teacher's teaching style is. Because if your teacher's teaching style is different than your learning style, then we need to come up with ways um, to kind of help support the learning content. Um, have the learners reflect upon their competing obligations. We're seeing more and more now that the um, nursing students are working two and three jobs. Um, many of them are primary um, 
the primary breadwinner for their families and the accelerated programs. And so we talk a little bit about um, what are some competing obligations. And many of them talk about work, finance, as well as time management. And so once we assess that, um, we also explore some of the resources that are available in regards to resources on campus, um, financial resources and support, et cetera. And we actually document, um, we document what those uh, competing obligations are, and then come up with uh, a goal together in regards to how some of the issues can be addressed. And then lastly, provide ongoing coaching and mentoring support. Uh, pretty much I found myself, particularly in the role of academic success coach, is just being a big cheerleader and encouraging them and, and listening to um, some of their concerns. And then oftentimes I would reach out to maybe a peer in the um, senior class or someone that has already graduated. And I found that that was very helpful because they got some insight, not only from me as the instructor, but also from their peers. And that seemed to be very helpful as well. Next slide. Okay. And some of the remediation tools and techniques that, um, that I found to be very helpful um, where the standardized admission and content test data, I'm not sure, I know there's various um, standardized products, but the ones that I can speak to um, are HESI and ATI. Um, one of the things for, that I found, this is an example, when you look at the TEAS test on the ATI, I noticed that there were some students that were struggling with PASO, pathophysiology. And then when I looked at their data from their TEAS admission test, it also showed that their scores in anatomy and physiology um, were low. And so we were, we were able to use that data and be very intentional about what type of remediation um, we needed to ensure their success. Because oftentimes, if it was med surge, I would look at the fundamental data, if it were fundamental and maybe pharmacology. Um, and if it was uh, OB or psych, again, looking at some of the pharmacology data, but I would always go back to the fundamental data on the content uh, standardized testing to include HESI and ATI content uh, reports that the students take midway as well as um, at the end of the semester. Um, the other uh, document that I found to be very, very helpful is the Blue Mountain Measurement Report, because that kind of identifies some of the trends um, over a course of time in regards to content. For example, uh, I was, when I was looking at the fundamental data, no matter what cohort I will review, uh, there were a couple of questions that students kept missing in regards to consent. Um, and there was one other question, I can't think of it at this point, but what we did is we took that to the curriculum and said, hey, is anyone covering this particular content in their course? And we were intentional about adding the content that um, we it showed that the students weren't able to demonstrate understanding. And when we look back at the next year's data, um, just that small change, uh, our percentage went up to, I think it was like 85%. And, we'll, and during that time, we also included some simulation in the content as well, was dealing with the uh, patient, uh, post-op patient, as well as um, pharmacology uh, assessments in regards to the various um, types of anesthesia. Um, and then the, the next report that I find very, very helpful, particularly um, recently serving in the role as residency, nurse residency program coordinator, is the practice analysis report. Again, in our curriculum, we kind of look at the NCLEX test plan and try to figure out what is that needs to be included in the curriculum. But I found that this report really, really helps because um, it demonstrates uh, a very structured process in regards to what it is that will be expected for the learner to know once they're in practice. And again, um, I found that some of the students, particularly over the last two years, um, were not confident in their skills and ability in regards to uh, nursing practice, particularly because the focus had been on NCLEX success. And then the last thing that um, I would like, to, I would recommend um, to all of the nursing faculty is to use the resources that are available 
and monitor the use of the resources. And what I mean by um, encourage and monitor the use of the resources, uh, the one thing when I would meet with the students after doing their uh, VARC learning, looking at their competing obligations, I would pull up if they had access to either HESI or ATI, and I would look at the usage. And it's interesting because oftentimes, particularly for those students who were um, at-risk learners, I found that they were not using the product. As a matter of fact, it was probably zero to maybe 10 to 20 percent oftentimes. And so that was an easy fix, just showing them how to navigate um, the product, how to use the product, um, particularly doing practice questions as well as content review. Um, and then oftentimes um, some of the faculty was not familiar with the product as well. So I think that's very, very important, um, particularly when the semester first starts, is that having all faculty, particularly new faculty, uh, go through the training uh, and make sure that they know how to navigate the resources, but and also um, basically assign the resources, align it to their content, because it's a, use, a useful resource if it's being used appropriately. Okay, next. Well, um, there's a, there, these are just a few um, references that I included um, that I have used um, over the past couple of years that I've found to be very, very helpful. Uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the VARC um, learning. I did not include, I took several slides out. I wasn't sure how much time I had, so I do apologize for that. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the VARC um, learning tool. Um, one of the things that I found particularly um, amongst at-risk learners, I noticed that many of them were multimodal um, learners, but many of them were kinesthetic learners. So what does that mean? Um, they are probably, they will do better with um, simulation, hands-on and practice experience. And I think that that's something that we really, really need to push, uh, particularly in preparation for the, the new Gen X um, and CLEX. Um, the other tool that is very, very helpful um, in many schools, um, I haven't used it, is the LASI um, assessment. And the LASI is a survey um, basically that provides an opportunity that assesses a, student, a learner's um, time management skills, memory techniques, um, lecture note-taking skills, um, how they read their textbooks, preparation, but most important, it measures their stress management. Um, I think that that is probably something that we probably will need to use a little bit more um, in our nursing program. Um, there is a, a pre-LASI to post-LASI test that's taken and you can kind of monitor that, uh, particularly the four criteria on the scale is time management, self-testing, concentration, and study aids. But a combination of all of these strategies used um, are very, very helpful. Um, lastly, the one thing that I wanted to share in, in talking to, I think we spoke about this at our last meeting, using the candidate profile report for students who um, were unsuccessful on the NCLEX. I often look at the data. I think currently I'm working with five students from various um, institutions. And one thing that I'm seeing a trend is as their scores are low in the basic care and comfort, as well as physiology and um, safety. With that being said, several of the um, students who were not successful in the NCLEX once they passed during their second attempt, they volunteered to speak to the senior nursing class and they were able to uh, provide some insight on things that they didn't do, things that they found helpful, um, and lessons learned. And I think that that's really, really big. We as faculty, we can talk all day long about what it is that we can do to improve um, student success. But I think that the true tale of it all is when a student can come back, um, those who failed and those who um, were successful on the first attempt, when they can share their stories, that has been very help helpful as well. So does anyone have any questions or like to open up for discussion? 
I did get one. Um, can you share any information about the practice analysis report and where we could obtain that? Oh, yes. Okay. So the practice analysis report is available um, through the NCSBN um, website. And one of the things about the pra practice analysis, also, it, it provides the uh, information for NCLEX, uh, for the NCLEX exam itself. And the practice analysis comes out every three years. And that information is um, summarized um, after surveying nursing faculty, um, nurse educators, as well as students. It's pretty lengthy. I had an opportunity to complete the survey, um, but it's very, very helpful because it talks a little bit, talks a lot about the skills that um, are needed. And then it talks a little bit about the confidence and the ability of those um, various skills that are listed. So I find it to be very, very helpful. Anybody else has a question? Yep, we have a hand raised, okay. uh, Dr. Bach. Yes, hi. Um, I was wondering if there's any research or if you come across any research that speaks to the benefit of embedding um, a team building piece into the process. And I'm asking that because we know that when people have a sense of belonging to something that is greater than themselves, they're more likely to really, really dig in and uh, follow the lead of the instructor or the coach. Mm -hmm. and I was wondering if there's any research out there on that and how we might be able to consider embedding that in your process. Hi, thanks. I Yes, I there is a lot of research. I just pr probably should have mentioned this, that I am actually um, pursuing my doctorate and have been working on pursuing my doctorate for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, have kind of got sidetracked a little bit, uh, but my topic is uh, utilizing a multimodal approach to improve student outcomes, particularly among uh, minority nursing students. And with that mm -hmm. being said, um, in my lit review, I do have um, a couple of articles that address the team building approach. Uh, and I can share that with Jasmine to send out to, um, to the group. And one of, the, one of the things that I use personally um, for uh, the team building approach, I had worked with about, I think it was six students, nursing students um, in the Tidewater area. Um, and what I did is I actually got them all together. That's where the whole R and Reach concept came. Um, we met uh, at a park and we talked a little bit, kind of unpacked uh, how they were feeling in regards to failing some of the things that they felt um, that they didn't get in nursing school and I always kind of have them reflect on upon what is it that you did? Um, how could you, what could you have done differently? Did you seek help and those kind of things? But one of the things that I noticed um, that they quickly bonded together, um, we would meet via Zoom, we would um, exercise first, we walked a couple of miles and then we met at Starbucks and they studied and, and worked closely together. Um, and then they start having meetings and uh, study sessions without me. And I'm, I'm proud to say that all of them have successfully passed boards. Um, they're doing very well. And actually two of them uh, just texted me the other day and they're working at the same facility. So um, the sense of belonging. And I think the biggest thing is too, that I noticed as far as um, rem intentional remediation is that students don't reach out for help. And so for me, I love looking at the data because I kind of reach out to them and you have to be intentional about that because I don't know if it's a pride thing or you know fear of failure, embarrassment or whatever. And I think it's really, really important for schools to put in place um, some type of policy that requires learners to reach out to either the instructor or the academic success coach um, early on um, if they either are having problems with the content or mastering the content and or failing an exam. Because um, I, I know for a fact, many of them, they wait until the last minute um, to reach out for help. And so what I have done is just created a, uh, a love for data and looking at it and kind of um, reaching out to them early, particularly in the fundamentals um, class and then working with them throughout the curriculum. And that seemed to have um, had good results with that. Thank you so much. And just a let you're speaking to a North State alumni, alumna. Mm -hmm. Well, hello there. <laughs> oh, 
Hello, Hi. David. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know, if I may add, I'm glad that you mentioned um, intentional, you know, being intentional in, in what we do. We, we created um, a platform here at FAMU, Intrusive Advisement is what we call it. But we had, we had um, historically been saying to the students, come for remediation. And of course, um, the, the verbiage remediation or tutoring meant that, you know, that they were in doing really well. And so, um, Last year, midway in the year, we just changed our terminology to coaching, student success coaching. Mm -hmm. And we could see dramatically an increase in students self, um, you know, purposefully seeking out the, res uh, the resources before it became mandatory when they had not performed, you know, as per the benchmark. So just that terminology helped change their mindset, you know, a little bit more in reaching out and knowing that, that that resources is available, mm -hmm. um, whether you think you need it now mm -hmm. um, or not. So mm -hmm. I definitely, I would agree. And one of the other things that I've found, the coaching part, um, but also um, coming up with a tool, a referral tool um, to have the students fill out after they take their exam. Because a lot of times, like you mentioned, if it's tutoring or they feel like, oh, this is being mandated and those kind of things. They're they're reluctant to take advantage of it. But one of the things that uh, I also found that was very, very helpful was the test analysis. Once they, the referral, have the referral um, for them to go and see the coach or remediation success coach or um, for remediation, have them bring their test analysis sheet because when you when they sit down with you with that test analysis sheet and it's basically a, a form that is used to go over their exams and a lot of people don't use this and I think it's very very helpful because the students will never know what they're doing wrong if there's not an assessment so many of them you'll go over the exam with them and then it's like did you know this content yes or no did you misread the question or did you just not know the information and over a period of time you can start identifying trends um, in regards to uh, why they're missing um, certain questions and one of the biggest things that I've found was test anxiety I'm reading the questions um, quickly not really understanding um, not understanding what the question was asking um, and then so when we talked a little bit about um, test taking strategies and reading the question and finding out uh, what the question is asking from the perspective of the NCLEX test plan, um, again, I saw some improvements in regards to outcomes as well. Yep. So anybody else have anything? And I, again, for me, I'm very, very kind of, I'm very, very passionate about, um, about this because I know a lot of the students, particularly if they get into the nursing program, um, they obviously um, are intelligent. It's just that they just have not been taught how to play the game is what I tell them. And I think if they have the instruction manual at the beginning, the NCLEX test plan, and really, really um, have them teach them how to link even some of the questions, um, I think if they have a better understanding, often they do a lot better. And we need nurses because staffing is really, really hurting right now and hurting our nurse residencies and programs as well. I think and, there was another hand. Yeah, and before we get to that question, you also, Tawanda, received a uh, direct message with the question. Okay. Just wanted to flag that for you in the chat. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Um, about resources. So one of the things for me, um, currently I've always been in, um, attached to academia. Um, and so I have the resources that I use or the resources that the students have. For example, most of many of them have ATI or the Saunders book. Um, and so I just encourage them to use that and I kind of help um, them navigate uh, the ATI resources. I searched for about six months. I worked for um, ATI and during my time in academia, I worked as the uh, champion for ATI as well as HESI. Um, I think those resources, if they're used correctly, they kind of help with keeping a pulse on progression. It's like vital signs. Um, if you use it and you use it often and you monitor it, it, it really provides um, direction in regards to what the student's needs are. And then, and then through implementation of some of the strategies, um, they often um, do well. Yep. 
have any other questions? Anybody else have anything? Hi, Twanda. Um, thank you so much for your presentation. And it's it's really good to hear this. I'm about to meet with our incoming sophomores um, for an orientation tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And these are this is exactly what's been on my mind, how to normalize remediation, how to show them that this is basically something that everybody really should kind of be doing to some extent, mm -hmm. but especially our, our at-risk students. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you you and other people have already spoken to this. I love the language change to coaching. Um, I'm just wondering, do you have like any kind of resources, like a test analysis sheet that you would be willing to share? Um, yes, I think, well, you know, I have to look for them. One, the one that we use, I do believe I have it at the office and I'm going to campus on Thursday. Um, Jasmine, and I'll send it to Jasmine um, and I will definitely share that with you. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. This is very helpful. And I don't know if you guys have um, seen this recently, but the students are, they have so much anxiety now. I'm not sure. I am not sure um, what's going on with that, but the, the over the past two years, the anxiety levels have um, increased. And so one of the things that I think is very important, particularly if you do maybe like an early intervention student success program is uh, bring someone from either the mental health department or um, the um, academic um, resources, because um, many of them are requiring accommodations. They need accommodations. They won't ask for the accommodations, testing accommodations until probably maybe like the third or fourth test. Um, and at that time, it's probably too late because they have a hard time getting appointments with their uh, mental health care provider uh, because of access to care and those kind of things. So the semester is really over when they probably should have started early on with those, those accommodations to help minimize the test anxiety and they probably would have done a lot better. Does anybody else have anything? Um, so, hey, hey, Twanda, it's Wynn. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. This is um, so helpful as always. Um, and a great idea about coaching uh, students about mental health services, especially around test taking anxiety and other anxieties that students might have. <clears throat> I wanted to uh, also maybe ask a question of folks and you could weigh in, uh, not just you Tawanda, but uh, other faculty and administrators on the line, um, either uh, you know, open up your mics or uh, weigh in on the chat. I saw a recent study showing that NCLEX um, passage rates have decreased overall over the last um, couple of years and wanted to see if you saw that and if you're seeing that in your schools, if you have um, been able to implement any um, uh, interventions and if so, have any helped or if there are interventions you want to implement but haven't been able to do so for various barriers and what those barriers are. Ms. Lee, if it's Gerald, I can speak for our students at the Mount. Um, I think some of the dip, at least for us, was uh, early on with COVID and some of the skills classes having to be taught virtually. Mm. The students really need that tactile um, teaching. So once we were able to get back into the face-to-face -face modality, it was really having to amp that up and just repeat it again. And so maybe what they would normally have had in their second year had to really be reinforced in their third year uh, before they get back into the clinical settings and, and they were seeing it in the clinical setting even though our students continued in clinical mm -hmm. they they really they didn't miss any clinical time in the hospital they were missing that skill skills lab and simulation for right. a period of time which goes back to what Tawanda said about mm -hmm. how you know especially for the tactile learners mm -hmm. it's so important to have that um clinical classroom simulation in uh environment hands-on environment as much as possible to prepare for the NCLEX. Okay, 
Twanda, do, can I ask a question? Um, yeah. You may have said it, and I'm sorry if I missed it. Mm -hmm. Do you do the evaluations for the learning style for all students up front? Okay. Or do you just so, do it if they have an issue? Well, so one of the things that many of the universities um, using the admissions uh, test T's, they assess for the um, learning styles. Um, so that's done uh, at the two of the universities that I worked with. But for me, actually, I do the learning styles for every class that I taught. And the reason being because that helped me prepare for my lectures as well. So I wanted to get a gauge on how many auditory learners and um, how many visuals and learners and those kind of things. So me personally, regardless of um, the standard test that is used, um, I always for me in lecture, as well as when I first meet the um, learners, particularly those that um, are in their senior year and they may not have done well on their comp exam, I redo the um, the VARC learning. And oftentimes what I'm, I hear is the teachers will say, well, we already did the their learning styles and they are uh, read-write, but it was always opposite of what they thought they were when I redid their um their learning style. So it was just a comfort thing for me because then I could provide some um, specific techniques in regards to how they study. Uh, even with the kinesthetic, obviously we know that uh, with kinesthetic learners, uh, the hands-on clinical simulation and those kind of things, but also note-taking, writing the notes down, you know, obviously that's been writing, reading. Rather uh, than writing typing it, it into writing, a computer. Rather than typing, right. exactly. So ATI has the system disorder sheets. And so if it was like, maybe if they're having problems in med surge, uh, one of the things that I required them to do uh, for remediation or coaching, they would have to bring their systems disorder sheets, um, showing me that they actually filled them out. Um, and mm -hmm. then we kind of would talk a little bit about um, the type of questions as it relates to the NCLEX test plan. But I found that to be very, very helpful. And I, I can honestly and confidently speak. Um, some of these techniques I have probably over the, I guess I would say over the past eight years, I've been working very closely with students uh, using some of these strategies. And most of them, um, I've seen a significant um, increase in the outcome in regards to um, the classroom as well as them passing the exam on the first time. Now, one of the things that I've learned, uh, and this is just a, a recent um, experience that I had, I was tutoring a young lady and I noticed that her senior year, um, she fell off. Um, and what I mean by that, she was not reaching out as much. I mean, I met with her at the library. Um, you know, we would meet weekly on Zoom and those kind of things. And some of this was volunteer and some of it was um, through the remediation um, role that I had at one of the universities um, and the connection to when she was um, being commissioned into the military. So I really took a special interest into her because um, she had to pass or she would not um, be commissioned. But interesting enough, um, the last year, which was, she was at a proprietary school, so they finished the quarters. She fell off, and but I was still monitoring her data. So I would see her performing like really well on the ATI and med search, just getting 90s and 96s and 94s. And unfortunately, um, two days ago, I got a text from her saying that her commissioning ceremony had been postponed due to unforeseen circumstances. And so I started thinking, and I asked, I said, did you take the NCLEX and did you fail? And she said, yes. And I asked her, how does she prepare? Because I didn't even know that she was uh, taking the exam. And I guess there's some new um, resources out. I can't remember what they are, but there are things that I've never heard of prior, before. I some nurse something, it has somebody's name. I have to find out what those resources are. But one of the things that I did find out is that many of the standardized tests that are out there, they have been compromised. So students are buying them, memorizing, memorizing, memorizing. And so I'm really concerned because they're taking the easy way out. And with that being said, we may see an additional decline in our pass rates because of that. Um, so I think we just need to be really, really careful on how we use the standardized test and then making sure that we um, provide some clinical stimulation to reinforce some of the content that the students need to pass the NCLEX.
but it was sad. So now she's, um, I spoke to her yesterday. She's obviously, you know, the, the whole failure, you know, going through that process, but I um, kind of encouraged her and um, she definitely needs to, to get some support um, to get over the um, failure part and then just get back on the saddle and really be intentional about studying. I encouraged her to get UWorld as well from looking at her report because it was near near passing on all of the content. Um, so that showed me that there was some test anxiety that was um, involved as well. Yep. That's all I have. So, um, you know, interesting about, I'm so glad Tawanda that you brought up uh, and focused really a lot of your work on the various types of learners that students are and really that we all are, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so for the American, for the educators associated with the American Indian Alaska Native Serving Schools of Nursing, um, you know, early mm -hmm. in the Campaign for Action, nine states, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation gave nine states, um, I think it was a million dollars or it was a significant amount of funding. It was the first action coalitions that got funding associated with the campaign for action. And it was on academic progression in nursing, right? Building more 80, uh, building more of the BSN prepared nurses. And so one of those states was Montana. And of course, um, uh, you, you would find a, probably a significant number of nursing students who are American Indian there. And they found, the uh, leaders of that APEN grant found that the, um, American Indian students learned differently, accessed information and processed information differently. And so they changed, Montana updated the NCLEX to accommodate the American Indian students and that significantly improved their passage rates. Oh, um, Regina, do you, Regina Eddy is on. Do you remember when you started, I told you about this and I think I put you in touch with Montana folks around that? Is Regina Eddy still on? Yeah, that was right around 2018, 19. When? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So do you do you remember um, what Montana found in terms of? I don't. I don't win. I think it was that. I think it was uh, they added more visuals to the NCLEX. Anyway, uh, I'll, I'll try to locate that, especially for our American Indian Alaska Native um, educators, people educating American Indian Alaska Native people. That's one of the other things that I found, and I guess for me, um, as everyone knows, I'm probably a little too obsessed with this, but I'm very passionate about it. Um, one of the things that I found um, the workload and faculty workload, uh, particularly when it comes to spending time with the at-risk learners, I think that is also something that is contributing to um, our outcomes, uh, particularly when you know you're you're teaching classes, you're mandated to go to committee meetings and those kind of things. And then, you know, in the words of some faculty, the students of today. Um, they kind of need their hands held a little bit more. Um, and so I often I hear that, you know, old school versus new school. Right now, we probably got about four or five generations of nurses working. Um, and then I also hear that even in practice. But I can tell you that just within this past year and a half working in the practice setting as with the new graduates, um, there's a lot of skills that they're not coming to practice with because the focus, they have to one, pass the content to graduate, then they have to pass NCLEX. And so a lot of the focus has been surrounded by this exam, but then when they come to practice, it's almost like you're, they're back in nursing school mm. uh, because of the confidence um, uh, in the the limited ability and exposure in a clinical setting. Um, and one of the things that I also that did not include in my presentation, for those students who do not um, progress 
Um, maybe they have to sit out a semester and oftentimes, sometimes it's a year. What I encourage them to do, I kind of create a plan for them to utilize their resources. They still have access to their ATI resources, their HESI resources and those kind of things as well as their um, standardized testing results. So I use that as a blueprint um, for them to review um, items that they have to um, prepare for, for when they return to take the class. But in addition to that, I encourage many of them to work as either a, a CNA or patient care tech that way, because as you know, they're kinesthetic learners. And so I think if they see it, do it, touch it, as well as having that um, blueprint for when they return, um, versus saying, oh, you failed and you have to come back next year, but there's nothing that's in place while they're uh, waiting to return. I think that has been very helpful as well. Such a great idea. I'm wondering, um, Twanda, would you be willing to do uh, like a little one pager with your bullet points about uh, lessons learned as to these ideas that have helped students Im improve? Sure, I actually um, am working with a group of this the Reach ambassadors and I'm actually getting input from them as well. I'm gonna be doing a, a presentation with Dr. Stamp, I think next week as well. So um, I can definitely share um, the lessons learned as well. Yes. Okay, great, so thank you. Test analysis and lesson learn sheet. I have that on my, mm -hmm. on my agenda. Yep. And a lot of, I have to tell you, a lot of people say, oh, are you charging students or are you, um, is this something I said right now at this point is particularly, I'm actually just doing it um, on a volunteer basis. Um, and a lot of the um, information and exposure that I'm getting is actually helping me with my studies. Um, but I think that uh, what I'm, what I've been told that students are buying up everything and they're, they have so many resources that. I said, if you really pay attention to all the resources that you're spending money on, it's all the same stuff. It's just you, the schools provide all the resources. The students just need to learn how to use the resources and then maybe use those funds for um, maybe put in a savings so they don't have to work so many hours, particularly during final exam. I had a young lady, she had two finals and she worked the night shift. So, I mean, how did you think you were going to do well? But I mean, she had to, to had to work. It was really sad because she um, failed by two points and she was kicked out of the program. So, yep. So, and we need nurses. So whatever mm -hmm. we can do to help them get, get through it, I think is something we really need to think about. Yep. So, all right. Well, thank you for, for uh, providing me with the opportunity just to share. Like I said, I mean, there's tons and tons of literature, articles, um, team-based approach, uh, remediation, coaching, and those kind of things. So I'm having the time to, to read them, read the information, but actually using the resources and being intentional about it, I think is what is going to help us um, improve student outcomes and diversify the workforce, which is the mission. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Tawanda. We really appreciate it. And as always, um, all of these resources, the recording from today's call will be available on our website. Um, and so you can, once it's available, I'll send everyone an email and I'll also direct you to our main landing page where we um, will be putting our learning collaboratives. So thank you so much. Tawanda is not that far away. She's one of our NCLEX trainers and she also participates in our HBC Learning Collaborative. So if you ever need to stay in touch or want to pick her brain, um, you know, let us know. We'll be happy to connect you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Tawanda. And thank you all so much for all that you do. Thanks. Bye-bye.